to another Whoa Wednesday with me, Mr. Goody Grammar. I know this is a much anticipated Whoa Wednesday just because we've been gone for a little while. However, I'm so happy to have you back, Grammar Goodies. And today, we are going to go ahead and dive into the mysteries of context clues. Huh. What does that mean? Ha! I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you and teach you some simple steps that makes you go, Whoa! I got it down. So, without further ado, I think we should go ahead and get it started. Just as a quick little update, we have our agenda for this amazing Woe Wednesday. We're going to start with a basket breaker, followed by talking all about context clue strategies. Then a little aisle check, finished up with a checkout. So let's jump straight into it with a basket breaker. Uh oh. For this week's basket breaker, the question is what is your favorite mystery of all time? Hmm. What do you ponder and go, huh? Do aliens exist? Oh. What about this unsolved crime? The Kool-Aid Man, it's him! Go ahead and answer in the comment section. Let me know what your favorite mystery is. So, whether you're with me right now, live on Facebook, or you're watching this a little later on on YouTube, make sure to participate in the comment section. You don't want to miss out, Grammar Goodies! So, take a second. As I do this. Okay. So, regardless of what you put, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I put. For my answer, I went ahead and put the Bermuda Triangle. That's my favorite mystery of all time. What happens in the Bermuda Triangle? Oh, the world may never know. Atlantis? Is it there? A time vortex? I don't know. That's why it's my favorite mystery. So look it up. Also, everyone, check out the comments to see other Grammar Goodies answers. And maybe dive down that Wikipedia rabbit hole to find out a little bit more about <gasps> the mysteries of the world and the universe. <laughs> ah, ah. Anyway, you might be asking yourself, oh, Mr. Goody Grammar, why is it that you are asking about mysteries? Well, that is because today we're going to talk all about how to solve those mysteries using context clues. No, not solving the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle, but how to solve mysteries of unknown words. So with that, I think we should drink up some Radioactive waste. Go, 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 go. Oh. Three, two, one. For today, as I told you, we're going to talk about context clues. And this has been a heavily suggested and recommended topic. And I want to throw it your way. So make sure to participate with me. What are context clues? Let's break this down. First off, hmm, let's go ahead and look at this. What is the meaning of the bolded word? Amy was incredibly gaga -ba when the clown unexpectedly jumped out of the trash can. It reminded her of her 23rd surprise birthday party. So, a clown unexpectedly whoop, jumped out of a trash can and oh, Amy was incredibly gaga -ba. Hmm. What do you think this means? Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Hold up though. 
I'm not going to give you the answer until the very end of this entire Whoa Wednesday. So stick with me to see exactly what Gaga -ga means. Ha! <laughs> All right. So when it comes to answering the question, what are context clues? Let's go ahead and split it apart. First off, context basically means the parts of something written or spoken that immediately precede, so come before, and follow a word or passage and clarify its meaning. Basically, it's whatever content, words, phrases, sentences surrounds an unfamiliar word. Then we have clues. <laughs> I'm Sherlock Holmes. And clues are a piece of evidence or information used in the detection of a crime or the solving of a mystery. Clues are what we use to go, huh, here's my evidence. Let's look at the biggest picture to solve the mystery. Putting it all together, Context clues are hints or indicators that give the reader clues about the meaning of an unknown word. Whoa! And we usually find context clues within the same sentence that the unfamiliar word appears in. And that helps us determine the meaning. But uh, how do I use context clues? I read a sentence or sentences, and uh, they're just words. I, I, I can't pick out the meaning of this crazy word. Well, I'm going to teach you three simple techniques or strategies that you could use to find out the meaning of an unknown word. That way you can pop, get it down. Let's look at this. For our three strategies that we're going to go over, the first one is definition. Second one is example. And the third type of strategy will be compare and contrast. What do each of these mean? Well, let's get it started. First off, technique number one, definition. The funny thing is, in this case, the definition of an unknown word can actually be found in the sentence itself. Pretty crazy. And eh, it usually follows or comes before it. You're using the context of the sentence, but guess what? When it comes to the definition, it appears in the sentence. So you really don't have to go on a long hunt to solve the mystery. The definition is clearly stated in the sentence. Let's take a look at an example. We have this. Brandon has a supercilious attitude. He thinks he is better than everyone else. Ugh, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Here, we're trying to find out the meaning of the word supercilious. But what does it mean exactly? What words or phrases in this example give us an indication of what supercilious means? Is there a clear definition for the word in the sentence? Absolutely! For example, Brandon had a supercilious attitude. He thinks he's better than everyone else. You'll notice that the second clause, he thinks he is better than everyone else, actually gives the definition for the word supercilious. Because, in fact, supercilious means behaving as if one thinks one is superior to others. Supercilious means, oh, I am superior. I think I am better than you. Which, if you notice, in this sentence, he thinks he is better than everyone else. This clause right here that follows supercilious gives the definition of the word. So you don't have to go on an Indiana Jones exploration to find out the meaning of the word. 
Okay, let's look at this example. Mr. Goody Grammar, ding, is full of verve and excitement. He puts all his energy into each grammar lesson. Truth. So, we're trying to figure out what is the meaning of the word verve. Do you know it? Hopefully it was a word of the week. But here, it's totally okay if you don't. We're going to go ahead and look for the definition within the sentence. What words pop out to you that kind of indicate what verve might mean? Let's take a second. And in the comments, go ahead and type some words that give you some hints about the meaning of the word verve. I'll wait. Okay, so, what did you get? Let me show you. For this, we could see that Mr. Goody Grammar is full of verve and excitement. These two are very closely related. They're building off one another. He puts all of his energy into each grammar lesson. And guess what? Oh, verve means spirit or enthusiasm, excitement energy. So, you'll see that the definition for verb is clearly stated within the sentence. It's like, whoa, it's already there. So, when it comes to this strategy, it's pretty simple to kind of find it, especially if it follows it. Just look and see, does this clarify? Does this build off of the word to give me some indication about what the word means? Absolutely, absolutely. Here's the fun thing. As you know, I love punctuation marks and grammar in general. So, you can actually identify punctuation marks to give insight into what the clues are. What do I mean by that? <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you. When it comes to this, you can actually have parenthetical commas, which are double commas. And double commas are used to insert extra information or clarification into a sentence. So, you can have a simple independent clause and then rah, put two commas to insert that information. In many cases, especially after a word that's more elevated or not familiar, not easily recognizable, what writers might do is put double commas right after that unknown word to give the definition. Whoa! Let's go ahead and take a look. Here we have the herpetologist, comma, a scientist who studies reptiles and amphibians, comma, accidentally stepped on a snake. Watch out for the snake. Oh. Here, you'll go ahead and notice we have two commas right after the word herpetologist to insert that clarification or definition of what herpetologist means. Let's look. So, the information within the parenthetical commas, the double commas, inserts the definition of the unknown word to clarify it. If we look here, the herpetologist, a scientist who studies reptiles and amphibians, accidentally stepped on a snake. You'll notice, whoa! A scientist who studies reptiles and amphibians is the clear definition of what a herpetologist is. Whoa! So, those double commas, or parenthetical commas, can easily be used to identify the definition of an unknown word in a sentence. That's because we're adding it in there to clarify. And, again, you'll usually find this with more elevated words. Whoa! Yeah! And I'm back.
So, huh, the definition is probably the easiest one to use for context clues. That's just because it's clearly stated. However, for our second technique, I'm going to teach you all about how to use the example or situation in a sentence to determine the meaning of an unknown word. Let's do it! So, for this technique, readers can actually find the meaning of an unknown word through the example or situation in which the word appears. The example or situation gives a clear context to what's going on so we can better decipher, yo, this is what the word means. Let's look at this for example. The young child was indignant when his parents only grounded him and not his brother for sneaking out of the house. It did not seem fair to him. Here, these two sentences give us a situation. This young child and his brother who ooh, 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 snuck out of the house. Don't recommend it, kids. They who were found out by their parents. However, only one brother was grounded, not the other one. So the one that was grounded became incredibly indignant. Huh, it didn't seem fair to him. So, using the context of this example, what do you believe the meaning of the word indignant is? What does it mean? Go ahead and put it into the comment section. What does indignant mean? Huh. Also, <laughs> if you have been unfairly grounded by your parents, I feel for you, Mr. Goody Grammar has as well. <sighs> have you seen my childhood? Okay, what did you put? I'll go ahead and give you the answer. The young child was indignant, which means feeling or showing anger or uh, annoyance at what is perceived as unfair treatment. Someone's yeah, mad or annoyed because they don't believe they're being treated fairly, much like one of the brothers in the example. He thought he was being treated unfairly because his brother wasn't grounded. Therefore, this example or situation gives us insight into how the brother is feeling. So we use the context of the situation to determine the meaning. It's as simple as that. You look at, oh, what's going on here? And how does this situation relate to this unknown word? Cool, right? All right, let's look at this for a second. As a Kool-Aid man and Captain Crunch debated and disagreed, I realized that they are clearly different. In fact, the antithesis of one another. What does this example tell us? Hmm, really think about it. What's going on between the Kool-Aid man and Captain Crunch to basically have this person realize that they are the antithesis of one another. What does antithesis mean? Hmm. Go ahead and put it in the comment section. I don't want to, whoa, give it away just yet. Use the example to really, hmm, figure that out. <laughs> Bam. Okay, I'll go forward. So, the meaning of the word antithesis is, boom, boom, the exact opposite of one another. As you can see from this example, the Kool-Aid Man and Captain Crunch disagreed, debated, fundamentally different. Those words right there and the example of them, oh, fighting and disagreeing with one another shows that ooh, they are the antithesis. We know they're not alike. We know that they disagree. They're fundamentally different. They're the opposite of one another. So with this, 
Antithesis means opposite. Ooh, like my counterpart, my antithesis. Ah, oh, Mr. Angry Antonym. Ah, oh, so sick of him. Kind of wrapping it up for technique number two. Really dig in deep to the example and ask yourself what's going on and what words are used to describe the situation to give a better understanding of the context surrounding the word. Pretty cool, right? Alrighty, let's move on to our third and final technique of our Whoa Wednesday. And again, whether you're hanging out with me right now on Facebook Live or a little later on on YouTube, make sure to participate in the comments section. I want to hear from you. Okay, technique three, compare and contrast. What does that mean? Here we go. For this technique, readers can actually use words that compare and contrast the unknown word. It shows a certain flow. Does this agree with the words around it or does it go against it? And we usually find out the meaning of the word in this strategy through the use of synonyms and or antonyms in the sentence. What these synonyms and antonyms do is they show the relationship and they give context. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We have this sentence. <coughs> oh, 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 must be winter time. Oh, I'm coughing up a storm. Ah, oh, it's solving all these mysteries. It's taking it out of me. <coughs> anyway, Tanya is an altruistic, unselfish, and giving person oh, that volunteers for various charities. As you look at this and try and determine the meaning of the word altruistic, ask yourself what other words are used to describe Tanya and the situation. Hmm. Go ahead and put your guess for the definition of altruistic into the comments section. And why you do that? Wha water! Yeah! Delicious! I'm back to life, rejuvenated and hydrated. That water is very altruistic. And, ooh, what does that mean, though? Let me go ahead and tell you. Basically, altruistic means selfless, concerned for the well-being of others, unselfish. It's someone that is generous and gives back, cares for others. But... How did we come to that conclusion? How did we get that definition of altruistic? Well, you'll notice in the sentence, altruistic is followed by unselfish and giving person. Those synonyms put after it in this list give us more information about good old Tanya. These are all positive words all positive synonyms that give us this insight. So we can come to the conclusion that altruistic means a caring, giving person, someone who is not selfish. So when you are looking for ooh, the definition of an unknown word, really, really pay attention to what other words are used around it, especially if there are multiple words in a list that give a description to something, much like we have here with Tanya. We could also suss it out by saying, oh, well, she volunteers for various charities. That must be pretty cool, right? Good job, Tanya. It's the holiday season. Let's go on. Let's look at this now. Before, we were looking at synonyms used in a sentence. However, here, I want to show you how we identify antonyms to basically get the meaning of an unknown word. 
Example. We were all saddened to hear about the passing of Austin's goldfish. Tear. Tear. However, we were elated to find out that he received a new one. Yay! Nothing like replacing sorrow with something else that is pretty much identical. <laughs> Filling the void in our hearts. <laughs> Unlike my last relationship, <laughs> why am I alone? Anyway, you'll notice with this, oh, we have a certain situation. We have a deceased goldfish, but then guess what? Austin got a new one. So what is the meaning of the word elated? Look for oh, maybe a shift in thought in this example. Hmm. And go ahead and put your definition of elated into the comment section. What did you get? Hmm. <coughs> I'm going to start making a beatboxing album with my coughs today. <coughs> I'm sending signals. This is how you pass the test. <coughs> Three coughs equals C for a multiple choice. Don't cheat, kids. Okay, what did you get as the definition for the word elated? Well, the definition for the word elated is ecstatically happy. Whoa, like me. I'm crazy and excited and happy. Elated. Ah, especially when I go to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and eat tons of sugar. But how did we come to that conclusion? How did we reach that definition? Well, we look specifically for key words, antonyms in this case. We were all saddened by the passing of Austin's goldfish. So this sentence starts off with a wah, wah, RIP goldfish. But then we have this key word, however, which shows that we are going to contrast what came before. This is all about sadness. Oh. But then the however switches it into a positive. However, we were elated to hear that he had a new one. So elated will be the opposite of saddened because the emotions are switching due to the key word however. So when you're looking for the meaning of an unknown word and you see key words like however, instead, in reality, thankfully, but, and it shows that contrast, all you need to do is take the information from before and flip it to understand the meaning. It's pretty cool, right? Woo! Overall, guess what? You can use all three of these techniques to determine the meaning of an unknown word and solve that mystery. <laughs> Sometimes in the same passage, yeah, you can use all three, maybe just two or even one, depending on the circumstance. So in some cases, the sentence lists the definition plain and clear. Secondly, an example, a situation can give insight into the meaning of an unknown word. Depending on what's going on in the situation, woohoo, can totally, totally tell you, yo, contextually, this is what this word means. And finally, look for synonyms or antonyms that give insight. Are you building off of, let's say, one unknown word? with synonyms, positive little adjectives go along with it, words that correlate, or does this unknown word oh, face this confrontation of antonyms, words that go against it? Either way, both synonyms and antonyms can help us identify the meaning of unknown words. Just pay close attention to how and where they are used. Hmm. So, 
Now that we have learned about the three different techniques, I think it's time we put that into practice by asking for a little employee assistance. <laughs> we need some employee assistance. For this section, what I want you to do is determine the definition of the bolded word. Then, underline or even just <laughs> think about the words or phrases that helped indicate that definition. Mr. Goody Grammar, you rambled there. Well, simplify it. Okay, each sentence will have a bold word. All I want you to do, much like we did before, is determine the meaning of that bolded word. Just make sure to pick out key context clues, words or phrases that help you come to that conclusion. Are you ready? I know I am. And grammar goodies, I know that you are too. Why? Well, because it's a whoa Wednesday. Let's jump into it. Question one. Veronica was full of humility. However, her friend Jonathan was arrogant, cocky, and narcissistic. Ah! What is the meaning of the word humility? Use the context clues, the three strategies to help determine, huh, what is the meaning of the word humility? And while you do that, I'm going to sip up some water. Alrighty, what'd you get? Let me go ahead and give you my answer. When it comes to the word humility, it means a modest view of oneself. You're humble. Oh, you're not bragging. <clears throat> you are not thinking you are better than anyone else. You're not supercilious, may I say? <laughs> But how did I come to that conclusion? How did you come to that conclusion? Well, there are key words in this sentence in the form of antonyms that can give us a lot of insight. We know that we are describing Veronica as humble. She's full of humility. Let's say we didn't know the meaning of the word humility. So we jump into the second clause which says, however. As I told you before, words like however show a shift in thought. We're saying Veronica was full of humility. Now we are going to contrast that. We're going to go against that with the word however. However, her friend Jonathan was arrogant, cocky, and narcissistic. Full of himself. So we know since this is going to contrast, humility is going to mean the exact opposite of arrogant, cocky, and narcissistic. Therefore, it means humble. So pay close attention to key words like however that show that shift in thought, that show that contrast. How'd you do on it? I bet you did pretty fantastic. So I think we should go to question two. Question two. After Brad was dismissive and rude to Sophia, ugh, she had the notion that he did not respect her. Ooh, don't take that, Sophia. Uh-uh. Sass. Just joking. But you know what I'm not joking about? Oh, my challenge to you to figure out the meaning of the word notion. Use context clues in this sentence to help you identify the meaning of the word notion. But what do you do once you find out the meaning? Go ahead and put it into the comments section. What does notion mean? Huh? I'm going to think. Huh? Oh yeah, what did you get? I already know you jumped on it because notion means a conception or belief about something. 
basically an idea, a belief. But how did we come to that conclusion? Well, you'll notice that we have after Brad was dismissive and rude to Sophia. We're using an example in this situation to basically ah, determine the meaning of notion. It gives us context. It says, yo, in this situation, Brad was dismissive and rude. Therefore, Sophia had the notion, the idea, the belief, the perspective that he did not respect her. Since he did this, she came to this conclusion. She got the idea that he did not respect her due to his actions. Right there, this example, this situation shows, ooh, Sophia coming to the conclusion that he didn't respect her. Therefore, notion, notion, notion means idea or belief. So use what's going on in the sentence, the example, to help you identify the meaning. How'd you do with that? Oh, stay with me, stay with me. We got this. Let's go to question three. The Kool-Aid man is a purveyor of knowledge about the positive effects of sugar. I love sugar. <laughs> anyway, he is very informative and loves to tell anyone listening. Let me read that one more time because you are trying to figure out the meaning of the word purveyor. The Kool-Aid man is a purveyor of knowledge about the positive effects of sugar. He is very informative and loves to tell anyone listening. Oh, good old Kool-Aid man. What does purveyor mean? Think about the context here. Hmm, purveyor, purveyor, purveyor. <laughs> Put it into the comments. I'm going to think about it as well. Mr. Goody Grammar, use, use, use your context clues. These are conversations I have with myself. What conversations did you have in the comments section? What'd you come up with? What does purveyor mean? Okay, I'll give you the answer. Purveyor means a person or group that spreads or promotes an idea, view, etc. In this case, we can use it as an example and a clear definition that appears in the sentence to give us insight into what purveyor means. In this, we have knowledge, informative, and you guess what, loves to tell anyone listening. So. Since we have informative and tells anyone listening, it's someone that spreads information, which the Kool-Aid man is doing about the positive effects of sugar. Therefore, we again have a clear definition in here of informative tells anyone listening. <clears throat> And we have a clear example of the Kool-Aid man doing this, spreading this information, which gave us insight into exactly what purveyor means. Did you get it? Hopefully so. Let's go to question four. For question four, we have the neighborhood rat stallions threw toilet paper all over a home smash mailboxes with a bat, and set a bag of dog poop on fire. Oh, silly rapscallions. <laughs> what does the word rapscallions mean? Look at this sentence and try and determine the meaning of rapscallions, and then put it into the comment section. Hmm. What does it mean? Remember, you have three techniques that you can use. You can look for the definition in the sentence. You can go ahead and analyze the example or situation, or you can find synonyms and antonyms that give you that insight. 
Maybe even all of them. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Let's see what you get. <laughs> As I drink water. <clears throat> Whoa! Okay, here we go. Rapscallions means a mischievous person. Ooh, someone that's up to no good. A jokester of sorts. A hooligan. But, Mr. Goody Grammar, how, how did you come to that conclusion using context clues? I'm so happy you asked. How I came to that conclusion is I used ooh, the example mainly to figure it out. I know that these neighborhood rapscallions are up to no good. Why? Well, they TP the house. Oh, so much cleanup. Smash mailboxes with a bat. Don't do it at home, kids. And set a bag of dog doo-doo on fire. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Those are all negative things to do. Are they quite funny? Maybe. I won't agree in public. But they are describing exactly what the rapscallions are up to, which I don't think a lot of neighborhood homes and people will be very excited about. Since we know that rapscallions are up to no good, we know that they are a mischievous group of individuals up to no good. <laughs> also, you know, mainly definition, example, synonyms, there's a whole bunch in here. I say mainly example. Did you get it? <laughs> Let's go on to our fifth and final question of Whoa Wednesday. Sam is a sycophant, a flatterer for personal gain, who will sabotage anyone to get ahead in his career. Hmm. Sycophant. Sycophant, sycophant. Huh. What does that mean? Use the context clues to figure out what sycophant means. <laughs> <coughs> yep, still choking. What does it mean? Hmm. For this one, I'll give you a little clue. <laughs> Look for specific punctuation to help sprinkle in some meaning to it. <laughs> and put your answer into the comment section. Hmm. What does sycophant? Okay, let's take a look. <clears throat> Put simply, sycophant means a flatterer for personal gain. Oh, right there, right in front of our oh, face. We have the clear definition within the sentence. As I told you a little earlier, if we see double commas right after an unknown word, they can usually be used to clarify exactly what that word means. In this case, it comes directly after sycophant to woo, define it. Pretty awesome, right? And don't be one of these. It's not worth it. <laughs> okay, let's go forward and do an aisle check. <laughs> <coughs> For this week's I'll check, what you will do is determine the definition of the bolded word. Huh, haven't we been doing that? Absolutely. Woo! And I want you to use the three techniques that we went over to do so. So, what will be the meaning of the word? Hmm, <laughs> let's see. What is the meaning of the underlined word in this? Amy was incredibly gaga -ga when the clown unexpectedly jumped out of the trash can. It reminded her of her 23rd surprise birthday party. 
This is a question I asked you at the beginning of this WHOA Wednesday. And I'm curious to see if the definition that you put changed based off of learning the different techniques that we use when trying to woo strategize our context clues. What technique worked best for you? Huh? What is the meaning of gagaba? Huh? Put it into the comments. I'm curious to see if it's shifted. Hmm, gagaba, gagaba, gagaba. What does it mean? Okay, I'll give it to you. Basically, gagaba means surprise, shocked, caught off guard. Whoa! How did I come to that conclusion? Well, look, we have the situation of a clown whoa, popping out of a trash can unexpectedly. And then it talked about it reminding Amy of her surprise birthday party. She walks in the Chuck E. Cheese and whoa, everyone pops out. So Gagaba in this situation means surprise, shocked, caught off guard. We can use these synonyms whoop, and replace Gagaba. You want to know the funny thing, grammar goodies? Gagaba is not even a word. It's a nonsense word. I came up with it. Why, Mr. Goody Grammar, why would you give us a word that doesn't exist? Here's my point. This word, since it's a nonsense word, uh, yeah, you're not going to use it in everyday life. However, the point I want to reinforce is, even with nonsense words, we can use context clues to still determine the meaning of the nonsense word. The nonsense word, I attached a meaning to it. Surprise, shocked. All you did was read the sentence and use the context clues to define this crazy word, gagaba. It's incredible. And even more concrete is that you can use it on words that actually exist. Any of the three strategies, definition, example, or synonyms and antonyms, compare and contrast, help us understand woo, what's going on so we can determine the meaning of an unknown word. It's crazy. We're solving mysteries, y'all. Oh, grammar goodies. We should start our own detective agency. What do you say? I'll buy a magnifying glass, maybe even a, a plaid coat. No, Argyle. Yes. Huh. Anyway, let's go ahead and start checking out. Oh. When it comes to context clues today, I can't thank you enough for solving the mystery with me. And I'm so happy that you decided to spend your Wednesday with me, Mr. Goody Grammar. Wednesdays are always so much fun because we're able to break down different topics. And if you have a topic that you want me to go over, go ahead and put it into the comment section. Let me know what you want to learn because <laughs> I'll make sure to do it. <coughs> also, I would like to give a huge shout out to Miss Irina for the amazing suggestion about context clues. Did this come at a fossilized and glacial pace? Absolutely. But we have it now, a little context clues to help out. So thank you so, 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 so much for the suggestion. I had a lot of fun solving these mysteries. How about you? Again, if you have any recommendations for Whoa Wednesday, are things that you want to learn as an English language learner, a student, or even a teacher. Throw it my way. Also, I'm accepting all recommendations from mythological creatures like centaurs and hoo hoo hoo, maybe even Cerberus, <laughs> the three headed dog. Much like we have the three techniques and strategies for context clues. <laughs> but which one is more dangerous? Uh -huh. Anyway, my name is Mr. Goody Grammar. 
thank you so much for dropping by General Grammar for this Whoa Wednesday. And come in anytime. I'll see ya. Woo!